Hey everyone, welcome to Virtual Paint Night. My name is Anna. I'm an artist based in Santa Cruz, California, working under my studio name Follow the Sun Art. Um, excited to bring these virtual paint nights to you guys so you can join in from the comfort of your own home. And tonight we're going to be painting these festive fish, so something um, kind of ocean inspired, but also um, Christmassy, holiday inspired, a fusion of the two. Um, so you can decorate your house for the month of December or however long for your rotating art gallery. Um, so welcome everyone. I see you guys are tuning in. Um, we'll wait a few minutes for people to, um, to find the video and join us. Um, but in the meantime, if you're here, you can go ahead and say hello in the chat. I'll be checking in on that sometimes. Um, you can also ask questions in the chat area if you have any along the way. Um, but yeah, you can let me know if you've painted with me before. I see Leslie's here, um, and Anna and Stacy are watching. Pause me on these. <laughs> um, but yeah, feel free to say hi where you're from, if you've painted before, or if this is your first time here. I would love to know. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to set up my palette with some of my colors. The colors I'm going to use today um, are blue, red, yellow, um, silver and gold and white also um, but you can use whatever colors you have this one is um, there's a lot of room for creativity so whatever colors you have available are fine I kind of went with the festive color palette like reds and greens and silver and gold um, so that's uh, the color palette I will be using and you should have something to put your paint on so I've got kind of a messy palette I've been reusing for all of these virtual paint nights um, but you can use like a paper plate or a Tupperware lid or anything that will hold your paint for you. And if you're not working with acrylic paint, um, you can use any art supplies that you have. So maybe you have watercolor paints or just crayons, colored pencils, even like a pen on a piece of paper. You can still join in and follow along. Um, the techniques will just be a little bit different. Um, but I can guide you with those techniques if you need any help as well. I've also got um, some brushes, so several sizes of brushes and a water jug to keep them in so the paint doesn't dry out. Um, you should have a rag or paper towels to dry your brushes on too, and something to paint on like a canvas or a wood panel, other surface that'll hold the paint. And what colors of paint? I'm using blue, yellow, red, white, silver, and gold. But you can use any colors you have. red paint. If you guys are ever looking for metallic paint, um, I've got this liquid metal stuff that I highly recommend. It's super shiny and fun. Um, yeah, but they have like silver, gold, copper, all those colors, so it's fun to mix into your paintings. It's by Sargent Art Supplies, liquid metal. gold there. All right, let me sift through the chat here, see, I'll read your comments, give you guys shout outs. Um, Stacy, first time painting with me from Cincinnati, Ohio. Thanks for joining. Glad to have you here. Arshana, hope I'm saying your name right. 
cool. Um, and I told you what colors of paint and Leslie from the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas shingle springs and Christy um, your daughter Danielle's first time painting with me cool glad to have you guys here and let's see and Sophia's here regular at all of my classes um, I got your Christmas card, by the way, I was going to respond, but didn't get to yet. But thank you for sending that to me. That was super sweet, and I love it. Um, and our Chana, you're using red, pink, and purple. Nice. Okay, so yeah, if anyone else wants to chime in in the chat box and say hello, say where you're from, if you painted before, um, feel free to do that. Feel free to comment with any questions as we go on there as well. Um, and if you have not done something like this before, um, basically I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process and show you how to create our painting of the day. So it's very beginner friendly. Um, there's a lot of room for creativity too, and I always encourage that if you want to do your own spin on the piece. Um, change the composition, change the colors. This piece also gives you a lot of flexibility with that because it's not very structured or anything. We're just gonna paint a bunch of fish on the canvas, but it'll be fun. Um, yeah, so I went over the supplies. You should have everything ready to go. And our first thing, if you guys are ready to start, our first thing we're gonna do is just um, sketch out the fish on our canvas or whatever surface you're painting on. So I am gonna grab one of my brushes and probably start with a medium one I like to sketch with a medium brush so this is like a half inch flat brush um, just to have a little bit more control over the sketching but with acrylic paint um, you can cover up and layer over the dry paint so whatever we sketch we're gonna be able to cover it up so it can be pretty loose and um, and rough if you're using other supplies like watercolor or colored pencils you might just want to get a graphite pencil and sketch out your fish first, the outlines, um, and um, and then you'll be able to color around there with that design. Oh, and I see Anushka is, is painting here. Okay, awesome. And Kat is here. Nice to see you too over there. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna start with um, kind of a neutral color. Usually I like to do a light blue or light yellow to do my sketch. Um, just so it's, if you use a really dark color, it's harder to cover up. But if you use a light color, it's easier to layer over it. And again, you might want to use a, a graphite pencil too. That's an option. Um, also an option if you're painting with acrylics, you can just sketch it out with your pencil. So we are just going to start by sketching out some fish. So maybe you guys already know how to sketch fish. It's pretty simple. You just make kind of like an almond shape or eye shape. And then you can extend those lines down so they crisscross in the back. And then you can make their tails any shape. You can go straight or you can make like a little V like that or a little curve. Um, whatever you feel inspired to do. And Anushka, yes, you can use a pencil to sketch. Kat's doing this in watercolor. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Awesome. Okay, so we're just gonna go in and kind of randomly put all these fish in. Start with one. And um, you know, there's no real rhyme or reason to how I do this. I just kind of start with a couple and try to squish as many in as I can. And some of them I overlap as well. So in this piece, you can see some are kind of hidden behind the others. So you can do that too, a little overlapping. If you have a space that's like too small for a whole fish, you can just kind of tuck it behind the other ones. Um, and that'll give us a sense of depth too. And you can also make some of them go off of the canvas. Like this one, his tail doesn't quite fit. Sometimes I add a little water to my paint too, just to help it be more fluid. Um, and yeah, just kind of randomly spacing these so they're not like in a line or anything. You want to have some variation in your piece. Not too much symmetry. So maybe I'll go up 
here now. Do the half a fish over here. Just a little face popping out over the edge. Do another little face over here in the corner. They're all going to be a little bit different too, so you don't have to make them all exactly the same. Each one of them can be individual and unique, just like us. So now I've just got kind of these small spaces in between my fish, um, but I do want to fill it in with more color and life. So this is where I'll start kind of tucking, tucking them into those small spaces and get a lot of that overlapping going. So you can just kind of draw your fish and um, try to imagine where the line would go. So that one's kind of tucked behind there. And that one's just missing a tail. Maybe I'll do another little one over here. Let's see, where else? Let's tuck one in behind these guys. So I'm just, um, as I go, I'm kind of checking for balance just to make sure there's not like too many in one spot. Um, if there's like really open spaces, maybe I'll try to tuck a fish in there. Um, so it's a good time to kind of step back away from your drawing. And if you look at it from a dis distance, you'll get a better perspective on it um, and see if it needs any balancing out by adding more fish or erasing them even. And see some new people tuning in. Welcome everyone. Hopefully you guys have your art supplies. We just started with a sketch. Um, let me know if you want me to go over anything again. You can type away in the chat box and I will keep an eye on that as we go tonight. Maybe I'll put one up here in the corner. Like on my screen, I can um, get a little overview of my painting. It's like nice and small, so checking it out from a distance. <laughs> so I think I'm pretty happy with this composition, so I'll leave it at that. And our next step, once we have all our fish sketched out, is to fill in the background. So we'll do that part first, and then we'll go in and paint all the little fish. So I'm going to keep working with this medium brush, just because there's a lot of kind of smaller spaces in there. Um... And just kind of go in with a, a light blue color um, similar to what I've been using um, or you can do like a dark blue you can use any color for the background really greenish blue purple blue green um, pink <laughs> pink ocean no limits on your painting So yeah, just kind of carefully going in and painting all of this blue. So to get this light blue, I just mix um, my blue with some white, so it's not super dark. And the white also helps with the opacity of the paint, because um, sometimes if you use the color straight out of the bottle, it can be kind of transparent and it's hard to cover the canvas up. Um, 
kind of like a com common troubleshooting thing we go through. Um, but if you add some white to it, that helps um, just thicken the color up a little bit. And yeah, as you fill this in, just make sure you kind of keep a larger perspective of your painting as you go. Because with all these lines, especially when you get the overlapping, it can be kind of tricky sometimes to figure out which part is the background, which part is the finish. Um, so it just helps to step back sometimes and um, take note of where your fish are and where your background is so you don't mix them up. Um, and yeah, just dark blue for the background. You can mix a little bit of white in with it. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing on my palette here. So I'm getting my dark blue just so it's not too dark. You could even do like turquoise or something. I have a little bit of that left over on my plate. Um, but yeah, I just kind of mix it up and then paint that on. Another way you can get creative is by doing little brush strokes in in your background even, you can create a little motion that way. Um, so if you grab another color like white or something, you can just do like little brush strokes in there, or even like a dark blue. And spice it up a little bit. That's an option. Thing I always look forward to is these Friday night paint nights um, and if you guys are new to me which it sounds like there's a few of you um, I do these pretty regularly I do twice a month zoom classes which are nice they're a little bit different than here um, and those are nice because we can see each other I can see your paintings and give you feedback um, I know a couple of you are already my patrons and see you all the time so um, very grateful for our little group on there um, but yeah, you can keep an eye out for my future classes. I do them twice a month. Um, currently planning January, February, but we are going to have one next Friday too, and it's going to be a watercolor class, a little watercolor sea star. Um, and so my paint along club for those classes is just $10 a month, and you get the two Zoom classes plus a recorded class every month and access to all of the recordings from like almost a whole year of classes on there. So it's a fun deal if you want to get more into painting. Good little practice to have, especially with 
uh, the way things are going this year. You know. It's been a highlight for me. So I know some of us might be going at different paces, so don't rush if you feel like you're falling behind from where I'm at. Just take your time working on whatever you're working on, um, and then you can catch up whenever you get there. It's just a pretty simple painting, and I'll post the, well, the recording is going to be posted right after the session as well, um, and that's going to stay up on my page if you need to refer back to any parts of it. Alright, and um, as I go around this, I just want to make sure I get as close to the fish as I can, as close to my little sketch to really cover up all of the canvas. Um, sometimes you get those little like white spots where the canvas is not totally covered, um, so you might want to go over like with a second little coat. Just do little touch-ups, um, but you know if we miss anything, you can always go back in afterwards and touch up the background as well after we do all the little fish too so no stress maybe you also want to paint the edges of your canvas if you're doing it on a stretched canvas it makes it look look nicer once it's hanging up Side. See a lot of these little spots that I missed on this canvas. I'm just going to touch those up a little bit. And then again, if you want to play around with any like little expressive strokes. Those are pretty fun to do too. Just little swishy strokes, very loose and fun. Adds a little bit of motion to your painting. And if you accidentally paint over any of your fish, that's fine too. Again, 
with acrylics is going to fix that. Um, if you're using a different medium like watercolor, you might want to just get a paper towel and kind of mop it up a little bit. Um, or crayons, color pencils, you might be able to use an eraser. There's always ways to kind of roll with the mistakes and incorporate them or cover them up. How's everyone doing? Good. I'm gonna take a step back and check it out. Yeah, I don't think I missed any of my background. Just some of my fish are a little lopsided, but that's all right. So I'll give you guys a, a second or two to finish up our backgrounds. Um, and if you're still working, just take your time. Um, all I'm going to do after this, after the background dries a little bit, is start filling in the fish. Um, so yeah, just take your time. No rush if you're still working on the background. We all go at a little bit of a different pace. Um, but yeah, I'll give you guys a couple minutes to work on that. Rinsing my brushes. All right, so whenever you guys are done with your backgrounds, again, take your time if you're still working on them. Um, and we're gonna start working on the fish next. You just wanna rinse your brush really well to get all the blue paint off so it doesn't mix in with your other colors. And then um, we'll just start with one color and do a couple of fish and then move on to another color. So in here, I've kind of mixed them up. I got like four main color combinations. So there's green ones, red ones, yellow ones, and silver ones. But yeah, you can use any colors you want, super fun. Um, play around with different combinations and then we've got the other color for like the scales and the details too. So very fun. 
Um, but yeah, just pick one color to start with and fill in a couple of fish. Um, try to kind of space it out randomly so it's kind of like a pattern. Um, of course, there's a lot of cool ideas too. Like you could make like a rainbow, like do like yellow ones, red ones, green ones, something like that. Um, like a gradient. Um, so a lot of options. Um, just follow your creative vision, whatever it is. Okay, so I think I'll start with red. So I'm just going to use this red straight out of the tube, I think. Maybe add a little bit of white to it, just again to help that opacity. Otherwise it goes, you can kind of see the canvas underneath. And this time I'm like the um I'm trying to be a little bit more careful with my edges. When I did my background, I was like a little bit sloppy. Like you can see there's a lot of rough edges in there. Um, but this time I'm trying to keep my stroke kind of clean, clean edge there. But we can do a little bit of lining at the ends too to make it stand out more. If the edges are still a little bit rough, that's a, an easy way to kind of fix it up. And then paint the body and paint the tail as well. So there's one fish and then I'll hop over to another side of the canvas and just kind of pick one randomly that will also be red. Maybe I'll do a couple more red ones. Make sure I leave plenty to do the other colors with. Um, Sophia, yeah, you can do any color you want for the fish, whatever inspires you. I just kind of went with the Christmassy colors, red and green and metallics, because I'm going to hang it up in my house after this. Okay, 
right, so I've got a couple of red ones. Let's see, maybe next I'll do some green. And I'm just going to make my green with the blue and yellow. Um, but if you have green out of the tube, you can do that, or whatever colors call to you. a fun little spot on the background that I missed in here. I have to go back in and touch that up. Let's see. I'm just trying to space this color out as much as I can and still leaving a few fish to do the other colors with. I'll do one more green one.
right. Um, so the next color, yeah, we'll do some yellow ones now. And depending on the color you use for your sketch, um, maybe you do it with pencil and it's easy to cover up. Um, but if you see any of your background showing through the paint, you can try doing like a second layer that'll help cover it up a little bit more. Um, sometimes it just takes a couple of layers, like on my edges here, I can see the background is still kind of showing through underneath. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of embrace that as part of the style. You probably can't really tell when you're looking from far away. It's just up close, I can see those lines. A little imperfections, but it's all right. Or you can also try laying down a little bit of white, like I've got a bridge this pale here. And it got lost so I just picked up some white paint and that's um, a lot more efficient at covering up dark colors so I'll just start with that and then put some yellow on top of that to brighten up the color If you just let it dry in between layers, that's a good way to kind of build up the opacity of your color. Another thing I want to mention if you guys are new to my classes is we have a Facebook group um, under my page. It's called Follow the Sun Art Club. So that's where you can share your inspiration, your finished artwork. You can take a picture and um, share your festive fish on there because um, that's the, the best thing about this is seeing all your paintings at the end, seeing your creative spins and hearing about your process, um, kind of like the community aspect, you know. Um, so yeah, that's the place to go if you want to share your art with us or share other inspiration or other creations you've made. Um, and also stay in touch on upcoming classes. I post all the classes on there as well. So go check it out. Um, the group is just called Follow the Sun Art Club. Okay. So I kind of left mine like a little bit unbalanced, like I have these three fish that are all next to each other, but um, that's okay. I'm just going to roll with it and touch up this little corner in here. And then my last color is going to be silver because I can't resist a little bit of metallic paint and shiny shimmer. Um, so yeah, I did just four colors. You can do as many as you want. You can make them all different and unique, whatever you want to do. Um, but I did red ones, green ones, yellow ones, and then silver ones too. So just rinsing, rinsing my brush really well in between the colors so it doesn't, um, get contaminated with colors. And let me see how the silver goes on. I just need a little bit of white in there. The white's kind of turned this gray. Maybe that was a bad idea. Sometimes I like to try new things when I'm live, and they don't always work out, but it's okay. 
We learn as we go. And hopefully it encourages you to make mistakes as well. Everyone doing good so far? Let me know if you have any questions or anything. Okay, I think I'm gonna just break up my silver a little bit and throw in a couple of gold ones just for fun. Super festive. Isn't too glary.
I'm just going to do a little bit of a touch up layer on some of these. Um, probably want to wait until it's dry, of course. Uh, they can do the second layer if it needs it. Um, just some of them I can kind of see the canvas through still, so a second coat will, um, will just help with that. Alright, so at this stage I've got the background filled in, got the first coat and all the fish filled in. So now it's just going to be mostly the detail work from there, um, which I'm going to do with a smaller round brush. And all we have to do is add the little faces. So you can either paint the faces a different color um, or just do like a little line to section it off. Um, we got a little, add a little eye, a mouth. And then the scales are pretty simple um, and that'll probably take a little bit of time so you might um, have a nice relaxing meditative evening of painting fish scales and eyes so I hope you guys are looking forward to that um, let's find my smaller brush running around here there it is so I just have a little round brush here um, to do the details and so you just want to think about having enough contrast. Um, so with these ones, I did the same color combination. So like on the silver, I did a dark blue because it's a darker color than the silver. So it stands out um, on the darker colors. You might want to do a lighter color, <clears throat> like yellow on top of red, for example. Um, so yeah, just try to find a color that is different enough from the base color of the fish um, so that it shows up. And again, there's no wrong color combination, really. You can do whatever you want. Where to start? I think yellow and green will be a fun combo. So I'll just do a little line to section off the head of the fish. 
even do a little outline if you feel like you need to. Helps it stand out from the background. And then just some scales are pretty simple. I'll give you guys a little close-up of what I'm doing for the scales here so you can see. So I'm just taking my round brush um, and doing these little scale shapes. So just one stroke down. And they're not like super perfect or exact or anything. Because um, I'm kind of an impatient, imperfectionist painter. You might be the opposite. <laughs> Um, in that case, you can take your time getting the scales just right, whatever makes you feel good. But for me, I like to just do a little quick stroke and get it done um, and not stress too much about getting it perfect or anything. Just kind of um, keep it pretty loose and fun and flowy. So that's how I do my scales. And you um, want to be kind of careful about loading up your little round brush too. these detail brushes. They can be kind of tricky to work with, um, but it's all about technique. Um, so basically you want to get your paint to a good consistency first and foremost. Um, so if it's too thick, it's going to go on kind of goopy and be difficult to control. But if you add some water to it, that'll help it uh, thin down a little and be more fluid. Um, so that's what I do. I'll just like mix in a little bit of water into my paint. And then when you're loading up your brush, um, you don't want to load too much paint on or else it'll like go on as a big splat and then thin out. Um, but you just want to get enough paint. So I'll just kind of like roll my brush on the palette to get the excess paint off and then just kind of dip the brush in to the end of the paint. So there's not too much paint on there and it's a good consistency. And then the pressure you apply to the brush will give you um, a certain line thickness. So if you press down really hard with your brush, you'll get a thicker line. Um, but I'm just going with the very tip of the brush, just very gentle touching down. So I get a nice thin controlled line. Okay, so maybe like this part, I press down a little bit more to get a thicker line there. But for the scales, I'm going with a very light, um, light touch on the canvas. So take your time with that. You can also practice on a scrap piece of paper or something if it's um, if this part's a little bit scary for you, whatever helps. And then I'm going to do all my yellow fish with the same combination. Same method. Just adding a little outline in here. Just to make it stand out. And also add a little couple of lines in the tail as well. And yeah, also if you're using a different medium than acrylic, you can still do the layering. Like with watercolors, you can do a darker color over top or even try white paint if you have a darker fish. Um, and same with other materials like crayons or color pencils. You can usually layer on another color um, fairly easily. So it should be a pretty versatile piece to do in different supplies, different medium. My next ones, let's see, for the red, I think some gold will look good on top of that. That's what I did for the 
um, my little demo painting. So stick with the same combination. Um, and Anushka asked if you can do any design on the fishes. Yes, of course you can. If you guys want to let me know what you're doing with your fishes, what creative spin, um, I'm curious. What colors you're doing, what patterns. I could see them all, but I guess I'll have to wait. So I hope you guys all take pictures and share them after we're done. Okay, we got all the red ones. Now I'll do a little bit of silver on the green ones.
And Anushka is using black on all the fishes. Awesome. For the uh, for the pattern work, do you mean? That'll look pretty cool. And Christy said you have a bronze paint. Oh, bronze on red. That'll look cool. Very nice. Silvery and gold ones left online. Hope you guys are all having fun so far. Okay, what do I do? Pick probably some blue on the silver. Going off of what I did before because it worked.
Sophia, definitely take your time with the paintings. You're still coloring them in. Um, yeah, this one is kind of a, a very detailed one and might take a little while. So, you know, wherever you're at, just enjoy the process. Okay, just got some of the gold ones to do here. So I do a little bit of red on them. Red and gold. And then after that, we'll just have the details of the eyes and the mouth. So that's our final step. And then remember to take your step back from the painting to look at it as an overall image because a lot of times when we're kind of zoomed in up close we kind of notice all these details but when you step back you'll see different things so maybe you'll notice other things that jump out at you and need to be fixed or maybe you'll worry less about the smaller things that might bother you when you're looking at it really close so I'm gonna sneak around here and take my step back pretty happy with it um, so again wherever you're at take your time um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the eyes and the lips on the fish which are pretty simple so for the eyes you just do a bigger white dot with a smaller black dot in the middle or you could use like a dark blue or another dark color it doesn't have to be black um, so we'll start with that and then I'll show you guys the little lips which are also pretty simple And I'm still going to work with my little brush here, just because it's the perfect size. And then the eye is going to be kind of like in the back middle of the head here. Okay, so just a nice white circle on each one. It'll be a little bit harder to see on some colors. Looks like silver it doesn't really show up very much. Maybe it does. It depends on the, the shimmer.
and then sometimes you might miss a fish or two with the eyes so make sure you also take a step back and do like a scan through to make sure you didn't miss any um and yeah kind of go in that sequence you know we did all the scales and all the fish and then we do all the eyes just while we have that color on our brush to make it simple so you're not switching in between colors to do all the details um so just kind of like plan out the process that way i don't think i missed any of course they might um, one of them might appear later on as they do um but anyway while those white circles dry before i do the black dot in the middle i'm gonna go ahead and add the lips and so again you want to pick a color that's going to contrast with the fish enough um, and stand out from the background as well because it's adjacent to both of those um, so in this one I did like a dark blue for the lips um, you can even add like a little highlight to make them stand out a little bit more um, but yeah you can do those any color really um, so let me think about these fish here should we do I'll do that dark blue again or maybe a purple I'll grab some of this pink I have on here and mix up a purpley color. I think that would be fun because it's different enough from the background that it'll stand out. And um, let's, there's also not any purple on the fish, so I don't have to worry about it blending in with the fish themselves either. All right. And again, just making sure the paint is a good consistency by adding a little bit of water to it. And mix it up real good. Okay. And then we'll do another little close up for the lips here. So, um, pretty simple. I'm just going to do two strokes. So I'm going to press my brush and then kind of taper off, give them a little smile, and then do the bottom lip the same way and just kind of connect to a point. So that's kind of like the pressure thing I was talking about earlier. So I start with um, a little bit more pressure at the front. So I press down with my brush and then I kind of lighten um, the pressure as I taper off at the end. Um, and that's all you need to do for the lips. So just two simple strokes. Again, you can practice if you want on a scrap piece of paper to get the control down. Um, but once you've got it, then you just go through and apply that to all of the fish. And you can also make them all different colors if you want. Again, there's no wrong way to paint this. I'm going to do that little curve up, too, to give them a little smile so they don't look grumpy or anything. We don't want grumpy fish. Or maybe we do. You can make them all grumpy if you want. self-expression now they're all going to look a little different and have their own personalities <clears throat> each individual fish and all of our paintings as well and that is kind of the fun part just letting go of control a little bit to see what happens enjoy the process Okay, so they're starting to look more fun now. They've got little faces. So all that's left after doing the lips on all the fish is to go in with that little black dot in the center of the white dot for the eye. Um, and then anything else you want to go back in and touch up after that, you can. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rinse my little brush. 
and then we already have some black paint on here so I'm just going to tap into that um, and just very carefully add a little center to the eye over there. I'll give you guys a, a close up again so you can see the details. And it helps if the white paint is dry already. Mine is still a little bit wet because it's pretty cold where I'm painting so the paint's drying very slowly. But if you grab enough paint on your brush then you can just still kind of rest it on top. Just careful not to brush it too much so it doesn't blend in. Or wait until it dries and then it's a lot easier. I think I got all of them. Yay. So that's our Festa fish. Um, so I'll stay on for another minute if you guys have any other questions, but that's all the instruction I have for you. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the painting um, and wherever you're at, still enjoying the process um, if you're not quite finished yet. Um, and the, the recording will stay up um, as soon as I log off, so you should be able to rewind to any sections if you, um, if you need the instructions again. So you'll be able to do that and finish your piece. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys take pictures of your paintings and share them in our group, Follow the Sun Art Club. Um, you can go ahead and join that. And um, oh, <laughs> I'm glad you loved it, yay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can spend however long you want painting on your own. Um, you know, otherwise I'll just like sit quietly in front of my screen with uh, no one to talk to. It's funny, funny world. Um, but anyway, so our Follow the Sun Art Club is where you can share your paintings. And if you guys are interested in continuing to paint with me, you can check out my Paint Along Club on Patreon. I'll post a link for that. It's just www patreon.com slash follow the sun art and it's just $10 a month and you get two zoom classes which are great because they're more interactive um we can talk to each other and um and they're all recorded as well and then I do a, a recorded video as well um and we do them in acrylic watercolor a lot of the paintings are nature inspired ocean scenes I always take requests too so if there's anything in particular you want to learn then you can shoot me your requests on there. Um, and then occasionally I'll do a free paint night too. Um, and I'm also thinking of offering an intro to acrylic painting class too. So if anyone has interest in that, you can let me know. Um, get a little bit more in depth into techniques and colors and composition and you can create um, a painting from your own idea. Um, maybe in the new year, I'll offer that. Um, for those of us with resolutions to be more creative. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys. So I hope you had fun. And thanks for joining and tuning in live tonight. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys soon in another virtual class or in person one day. <laughs> hope you all have a good night and happy holidays. <laughs>